Yay! Happy New Year! Happy New Year, everybody! I'm Ophidian. This is vlog number 13. It's January the 1st, 2016, where I'm walking right now. This is the old Hussus Dyke. And this is where I used to walk at night when I was producing stuff like the Black Box and the other old tracks. This is where I would go hang out in the middle of the night, look at the stars and get some inspiration. And um, I don't do that anymore. I probably should. It's a little bit of history there for you. But right now I wanted to talk about something a little different than normally. Usually I've been showing you stuff that um, you know, things that were happening to me traveling, playing at clubs, festivals and whatnot, a bit of gear. But this time I wanted to talk to you guys about a subject and actually, you know, tell you a bit about my personal opinion about stuff. So what I want to talk about is the Hardcore Radio Top 100, formerly known as the Masses of Hardcore Top 100. And um, tomorrow they're going to be unveiling the new top 100 of the best 100 tracks of 2015. I have no idea, you know, of the final results. And um, that does not actually matter for uh, this video. So do I think that the top 100 is a fair representation of, you know, talent and um, you know, quality tracks being released? Not exactly. Do I think it's a fair assessment of what the whole scene thinks about tracks being released? Not really either. Do I consider it a good place to start for like a new fan of hardcore to discover different flavors that are available for listening? Also, not completely. So, um, yeah, do I support the top 100? Yeah, in fact, I do. I think it's a, it's a good thing, and I'll tell you why. So, back in the studio once again after a catastrophic power failure. So, I wanted to address a couple of criticisms that are leveled at the top 100 by DJs and producers and fans alike. And um, the first being that it, it's fake. It's just made up, and the, the, the list is just compiled by some people and published. That's not true. I know some of the people that work behind the scenes and they're very secretive about what goes on, but of course I can double check these guys, but they assure me that everything's 100% honest and it all comes down to voting. And every year, more and more people vote. And I heard that this year, another record amount of voters have gone to the site to enter their top 10. So it's, it's definitely not fake. The second criticism is that it's some, somehow biased. The top 10 ends up being Anger Fist tracks and uh, a couple of anthems anyway, no matter what people vote. Well, a couple of years ago, when the voting wasn't done on a neutral page yet, it was, I don't think it was intentionally biased, but there were, you know, if you're trying to come up with the top 10, and you, you, you try to figure out the last couple of tracks and there's a, add in the corner of your eye for some DJ or for some festival, it can obviously, you know, influence your choice at that moment. And um, I don't think that's a good thing. I don't think that was intentional at all, but it might have influenced it a little bit. Strictly speaking, that is a form of bias. Nowadays, I think it's much more neutral. I don't think there is any built-in mechanic that that makes people like Anger Fist completely fill the, the top regions. I just think it's something that's very hard to escape because, let's be honest, Anger Fist has a ton of fans. Not even a ton, he has like seven tons of fans. But um, what that means is that if 10% of those people go to the site and vote for his track solely because you know that's what they know or that's what they favor then uh, yeah it's going to be very hard to to defeat those tracks this means that the social media and and facebook and twitter and these kind of sites 
will have some impact on the final list because certain DJs that have a lot of followers will have more influence, will be able to, you know, get a lot of people riled up and go to the site and vote. But, you know, there's no reason that any other DJ or group of people or forum can't just massively go to the site and vote for who they think is the best. It's just that the way that it is communicated might influence it a bit. But I would not say that's a, a fault in the way that it's set up. It's just something that's, you know, that's so inherent to a lot of stuff nowadays because social media just has such a grip on, you know, on any anything that needs voting because of the sheer amount of people that participate. A third criticism is that it paints an unrealistic picture because of the last point of what the hardcore scene is like and uh, who's doing well and which tracks are good or not. And there's a little truth in that, but you know you have to see what this is reflecting is the the final verdict of a certain slice of the scene. And while this may not hold true for all subgenres and every country, and it's true because it's a, an objective result of an equation. So for me. It's the truth from a certain viewpoint. And as long as you consider that viewpoint, then there's no, no reason to contest the final result. And what I think is really good about stuff like this is that it, it gets people talking and it summarizes the year. You know, you might not even think about a couple of tracks anymore. And then when you see this list, you think, yeah, it was actually a really good year because all these great tracks came out and um, I should play that one more or whatever. And, um, you know, it's, it gets people talking about hardcore and it gets posted and it gets people discussing and people who m may not agree. That's perfect. It's the discussion that will actually feed the, the, the scene. It's healthy to have this kind of talk going on and people um, having their own opinions. And, you know, and, and if you don't agree with, with this list, you know, it doesn't matter. That's not what it's about. And at the same time, if you do well on the list, it means you, you left an impression. It definitely means you left an impression because there are a lot of people who vote for this list. And if you get up in the top regions, you've, you've done well. The w it doesn't mean if you didn't make the top that you didn't do well, but it does mean that you left an impression if you get up that high. Personally, you know, I have never done really well. Oh, well, I haven't done bad. I've never had a number one. I've never even had a top three. I've been close a couple of times. I've had a couple of uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth places, like uh, So Many Sacrifices and Forgotten Moments was, I think, number four, the remix. And last year I was number five with uh, Illusions with the player. I mean, that's cool. It doesn't mean that after, after seeing that, I'm going to be like, ah, oh, this, this is really cool. I'm, I'm one of the top DJs or whatever. Or if I don't make it, that I don't think I will do really well this year. But that doesn't mean that now I'm like, eh, it's a failure and, and people don't listen. And it, that's not how it works. This year, I just might not have made as big an impression because maybe I didn't release as much or maybe it wasn't as high profile. I think if you take all these things into account, you know, the end result is that anything that gets people worked up and enthusiastic and gives you a reason to, to talk about tracks and about hardcore, that's, that's always a good thing. And I will support that. And um, I mean, you don't have to like the list or you don't have to like the result or maybe you dislike the fact that certain tracks were not you know, not mentioned or didn't make the list or some DJs you feel are underrepresented. That may be true and change it next year. And don't see it as the whole truth, but see it as a part of the truth. So anyway, I hope it made some sense what I was saying and uh, I'll see you guys in the next vlog. Where call out some numbers and uh, those are the lucky winners. So, the first winner is lucky number 13. Alright, number 13.